What's up, bodybuilding.com? I'm Cassie, this is Tyra, and we are live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch. Got it right. <laughs> uh, with the growing popularity of CrossFit and functional fitness, we've noticed a lot of people in gyms, just like this one, doing cleans that aren't very pretty. That are more like reverse curls than cleans. Sorry, camera. I was looking over at the computer. <laughs> so we're going to go through how to do a clean properly, how to do a power clean, a hang power clean. I'll explain what that is and what that means later. Um, before we do that, I just want to tell you guys a little bit about who we are and why you should trust what we say, what I say. Tyra's just going to do the movements. She's pretty. Yes. Um, I'm Cassie. I'm a competitive crossfitter. I know. Boo. And I am a <laughs> USA Weightlifting Sports Performance Coach, Level 2. And I've been to nationals for weightlifting, and I've been to the CrossFit Games with team. And I really like picking up heavy things off the ground and putting them over my head. Go. Go. Okay. Um, hey, guys. Um, I'm Tyra, a.k.a. The Demont Trainer. you guys today? Um, let's see, a little bit about how I got into CrossFit, I guess. I've been doing it for like a year and a half now. Um, I used to do, like I'm sure a lot of you do, you guys currently do, um, figure and fitness competitions. Uh, she has trophies at her desk. A couple. But uh, I did that right after I got out of college. I was a collegiate athlete, kind of looking for that same competitive edge, and then got into CrossFit after I realized that kind of figure and fitness wasn't my jam so much. This in heels is a lot taller than It's hard to eat right chicken now. and broccoli. That's true. Every day. So I found CrossFit. It was very similar to my athletic background, and I fell in love with it. Took a little sip of the Kool Aid, and I've been drinking it ever since. So it tastes so good. <laughs> so yummy. I know. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, while we're talking and demonstrating and warming up, uh, please ask us questions. Anything if you want to know. Um, we're both sort of former bodybuilders too. So if you have questions about. Um, or different types of workouts that might help your bodybuilding, we're happy to answer those questions as well. Um, anything about CrossFit if you want to know about, we're happy to answer that. Powerlifting, weightlifting, um, we will do what we can. So we're going to start. Tyra's going to do a little workout, uh, sorry, warm up. So before you do anything with a barbell, it's important that you like actually move your body. Um, you can do warm ups with the barbell, but if you're unfamiliar with putting the barbell on your shoulders and doing anything with it, I suggest that you warm up without it first. So we're going to start going to do three rounds of air squats, and then you're going to do kettlebell swings, and you're going to do push-ups. Ten of each thing. Ten of each thing, okay? While she's doing her warm-up, and you don't have to, don't take, I mean, take your time, do the movements properly. Um, while she's warming up, we're going to talk a little bit about your pre-workout nutrition. Um, I, if you're doing a CrossFit type workout or a high intensity, even like hit cardio, I suggest you eat some carbohydrates before you work out. Um, you can get picky with the type of carbohydrate that you eat, uh, depending on how you feel, how workouts feel on your tummy. Um, I wouldn't suggest eating like a piece of chocolate cake, even though you can. If you can eat that and you're fine with it, go for it. Um, but some rice or quinoa, you can eat, um, I mean, vegetables tend to be pretty fibrous and they don't necessarily give you the, the same energy that like something easier for you to eat well. Not easier to eat, but all right. Total real problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you're on a keto or low carb plan and you like to eat that way, I suggest that you put your carbohydrates sort of before and after your workout. So you can be low carb the rest of the day, but surround your workout with carbohydrates so you have the energy to do what we're going to do. So you can eat some protein and before and after, I suggest. There's no, like, it's more important you're consistent with the amount of protein you eat than working, like, worrying about the anabolic window. It's not, it's a thing, but it's not, more importantly, it's just, like, the amount of protein you eat all day. So worry about that more than how you're putting it into your workout. Um, some people like to eat carbs into a workout. Um, I don't necessarily like to do that when I'm doing a CrossFit, like high intensity workout, but if we're going to do, if you're going to do heavy lifts, so if you have like a deadlift day, and you're, you're working up and you're in those heavy sets, and you're like, you start to run out of energy, which totally happens, like keep a 
cookie in your pocket. Oreos, something. It's like a mid-strength workout power-up. It's a great way to uh, help you feel not so tired. So you can get those, especially those last few sets of heavy reps, so that like 85, 90%, those suck. Having a little bit of carbs in your system and sugar in your system actually helps. Am I talking too fast? Am I talking too fast? I'm talking too fast. Okay. Supplements. I am not a pre-workout taker. Are you a pre-workout taker? I want my heart to jump out of my Yeah. Chest. So when you're doing CrossFit, if you're doing stuff that's high intensity, uh, so pre-workouts that have stimulants can increase your heart rate. And a lot of the game you play in CrossFit is trying to keep your heart rate at the red line or just below it. And when you have caffeine in your system, that makes like keeping your heart rate at a, at a level that like you don't want it to like, jump out of your chest or, or yeah. So that's why I wouldn't suggest a pre-workout for if you're going to do a high-intensity workout like CrossFit. If you're going to lift and sort of just lift, go for it. Um, if you are sensitive to stimulants, try a stim-free one. There's lots of good options out there for stimulant-free supplements. For a post-workout, um, I would suggest something with creatine in it. If you don't already take a creatine supplement, you should. Um, there's lots of really awesome science around creatine, and it, it, it has been shown to be beneficial for improving your strength, your performance, um, your endurance. It's just it's an all-around rad supplement. So um, if, you, if you get a pre-workout, get one that has creatine in it. Um, if you're a woman, somewhere between 3 and 5 grams a day is good. If you're a dude, about 5 grams a day. If you want to load that, 7 to 8 grams for a week or two and then back it off. Um, if you load, you're gonna see noticeable difference earlier, but with a um, lower dose protocol, you're gonna have less sort of like bloating and if you have any digestive issues. While you're taking a creatine supplement, if it's hot out, I want you to drink a lot of water. Always drink water anyway, it's good for you. If you're taking a creatine supplement, it's better to drink more water. How is that? Great, yay! Ready to rock. Okay, so, we are going to start with some mobility. So a lot of the issues with, are we having any questions? Does anyone care what I'm saying? <laughs> all right. We all care what you say. Are saying. they all? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what we're gonna do now is talk about um, mobility for, for bodybuilders. And a lot of times bodybuilders have a really hard time getting in this position. So if you're at home, if you can't do this, you cannot do a clean. If your elbows can only get to, like, to your, I don't know where this area is, it's going to be really difficult. Your goal, if you want to be good at weightlifting, is to be able to move your elbows from here to here as quickly as you can. So get them up. The way we're going to work on that is to grab the barbell, do some front squats. Now, lots of bodybuilders do, will you show the like bodybuilder way? Do this because getting in this position is difficult. I suggest if you're doing front squats, if you're just doing them for your quad development, then like bodybuilding them away, that's totally fine. But if you are wanting to work on your mobility, get your hands under the barbell. Sorry. Um, and the best way to do that, can you guys see here in? So if you notice that her hands are like pretty much all around the barbell, and that's going to be hard. So she's, she's pretty good. And it almost feels like you're going to choke yourself out. It should be pressure on your neck, it should be pressure on your chest, <laughs> on, your, <laughs> Sorry. on your collarbones. Um, sometimes people get bruises on their collarbones. When you get better at it, those bruises will sort of dissipate. But her hands are around the barbell, and then it, they're not on her fingertips. And if you can do that, so some people would just show like how it would look on your fingertips. Oh. So some people struggle to like get their, have the flexibility and the wrist flexibility. If you're here, that's okay. Um, work on getting more of your hand around it so you can work on getting your elbows up. Okay, if you sincerely cannot get in this position and it makes you feel like you're going to die, then you can get straps, wrap the straps around the bar, and hang on to the straps, if that makes sense, and squat that way. It still rests on your shoulders, but it's, it's less difficult on your wrists and your elbows. But we're going to pretend that you have the best mobility ever, and we're going to do front squats. So, Tyra's going to do five slow front squats. Good job. And she's bouncing a little bit just so she can get warmed up here. Beautiful. So, 
So Tyra is pretty mobile. If you notice, so she it's can, would you um, just sit at the bottom of your screen? You don't yeah. have to bring that if you don't want to. Oh, I can do it. Okay, so she can sit at the bottom here, and if you notice her back, you probably, would you turn? I know that's really awkward. <laughs> if you notice her back makes a nice, beautiful straight line. A lot of people have a hard time when they, when they squat, their butt tucks under. You can stand up again. A lot of people also struggle with a front squat is that their weight comes forward on their toes and they end up doing this. And there is nothing good about this position on your toes. So try your best to keep your weight in your heels, engage your hamstrings and your butt. Going down. One. Can you do front squats with small barbells? Small, small barbells. barbells. Yeah, oh, like yeah you can do them with whatever you straight want. Straight bars? Yeah. yeah, with like the, the bars that you would do. Yeah, yeah, do it. That's totally fine. It so might be more difficult. No, do it. Yeah, it's not going to be more difficult. Go for it. Um, I lost my train of thought. So as you're doing front squats, practice. So I want you to worry about position over your depth. So a lot of people are all like, yeah, astrograss is rad. That's the only way you can do squats. Probably not the best idea, especially if you're immobile. Um, a lot of people lack mobility in their Achilles. And a really good way to test that is to stand up. You can put that down if you want. So like pretend this is a wall. Step your foot and try to touch your knee to the wall without lifting your heel off the ground, if that makes sense. And then back up, try it again. Great way to test your ankle mobility. And you'll notice right when it starts to hurt. And that's gonna be, it's gonna be harder for you to be in this position if you have poor ankle mobility. So that's another piece of mobility to work on. Um, a lot, another thing that bodybuilders struggle with is actually even getting down to depth. You do not have to be here. You don't have to be in this position. Position over depth, that means your back needs to be straight, your chest needs to be up, and if you can only, your toes should be pointed out a little bit, and if that means you can only get to here in that position, just stop there. It's fine. Because if you're gonna do cleans, the weight that you're gonna start with is not gonna be heavy enough for you to even worry about getting this far down. So that's something to work on. Got a question? A uh, question from Twitch. How can I increase wrist and ankle mobility? How can you increase your wrist and ankle mobility? This is excellent. There's a lot of really neat drills. Um, just stretching your ankles is one thing. Um, even finding an edge and coming down and just putting pressure on this area. Squatting. Even if you just sit in your living room like this, just hang out for a while and practice and feel your ankles move. Lean forward, lean back, feel what they're doing. I did this all the time whenever I first yes. started. Yes, when, when you first start doing all this kind time. of movement, like just sitting in a squat, so hard. Work on it so you feel comfortable in that position. Wrist mobility, that's another thing. Again, just stretching it, like a lot of good drills. Hanging out here, this area is good. Moving them around. It's just something that a lot of people don't pay attention to. As you get better at holding a barbell in this position, your wrists are going to get better at holding the position. It's just gonna take some practice, it's gonna take some time. Yeah, it's gonna hurt. If you wanna wrap them, if that helps you, that's fine. But like, <sighs> weightlifting is painful. <Yeah>. And <laughs> until it's your body, territory. it does. And your body will loosen up, it'll get used to it, but you just gotta give it some time and like, yeah, it's gonna hurt. And you have to work at it, like yeah. work through. Yeah you, got, yeah, you just have to be like, well, it hurts too bad. I got to just keep going. Um, okay, so do another set of five front squats. Notice her feet are, keep going, about hip, about hip distance apart. Her toes are out a little bit. Her knees, go ahead. Now, you hear that advice like, knees must follow toes. That's true. To an extent, though, they don't have to be like that far out when you go. It's hard to like, you can ram your knees out and make them follow your pinky toe. That's fine. What people mean by that is they don't want knees caving in as you squat. And I see this happen to a lot of bodybuilders, especially they'll get down okay and on the way up, it'll be like eh, eh. Women. Women, women have a really hard, yeah. 
So your goal is to, if you're struggling with this, go ahead, just keep doing it while I'm talking. Yep. If you're struggling to do this properly, take weight off, like whatever, or just hold a kettlebell. Um, goblet squats are great for this too. Hold a kettlebell, do your squats that way. That way you can work on this positioning without having to worry about the flexibility that it takes to keep the barbell on your shoulders. Question from YouTube. For someone doing a physique competition, would these be ideal to do on back or shoulder day? <sighs> I knew this question was going to come. So, question is, did you guys hear it? Should I repeat it? Question is, if I'm going to do a physique contest, when would be the best time to implement this workout, or movement, I'm sorry, this movement on back or shoulder day? Neither, <laughs> or both. Um, the purpose of a clean is not to build a particular muscle group. The purpose of a clean in a competition sense is to do more weight than the person that you're competing against. That's the ultimate goal. Um, but for an athlete, it improves your coordination, it improves your athleticism, it improves your speed, it improves your power, and you look awesome if you're doing it and doing it properly. So, I mean, I, if, you're, if you're doing a physique show, bro, like, don't, don't do this. There's no reason for you to do it. Um, if you want to do it to improve your athleticism or power or speed or just because you want to mix things up, if you throw it in any day, it'll work. This, this, work, this movement literally takes every muscle in your body to do it properly. So whatever day you're least tired, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And that's what I think a lot of the reason why I switched over to is because when I was doing bodybuilding and figure and fitness, it was like, oh, my shoulders need to get bigger or my glutes need to get bigger. Or what, what can I, how can I incorporate like a movement like this? And, and in reality, you, are, you, are, you have weaknesses in your body that you're trying to work on, but this is more of like a full body motion yeah. and takes everything in your body. Yeah. Full body. And you might <laughs> notice that you get better at bodybuilding movements um, because you have to work your entire body to do this movement. And that, that's, like, that's a lot of brain power. That's a lot of neuromuscular connection. And that's like athleticism that a lot, that a lot of people just don't have. So you might find that you can do squats better if you do these. You might find that your um, shoulder presses get a little better because you're doing these. Mobility in general, if you're more mobile, you probably feel better doing your workouts. Chance of injury goes down Chance, a yes. lot. Yep. OK, so the other thing I want you guys to work on um, if you're interested in doing this is overhead squats. Dun, 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 dun. dun. Uh, before you do that, before you even pick up a barbell with an overhead squat, I want you to just lift your arms up in the air and try to do a squat. Watch Tyra. Beautiful. So would you do that and yep. turn around? Other this way. way. Yeah, yeah. This way. Well, so they can see your, nope. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, that'll work. Right okay. there. Go. Okay, again, I'm gonna hold this. Tyra has a really, has really good mobility. Her shoulders can be, are still up and her back is still flat. And I'm telling you right now, this is going to be so painful for most of you. You used to look like this. Yes. So, good. Thank you. It's a perfect example. <laughs> Being able, you can stand back up. Being able to keep your chest up and having your arms up and having your butt back and having your legs bent, this is a position that most of us will never get into in our lifetime unless you're doing weightlifting, which is another excellent reason to do it. Again, if you want to work on this mobility, hip, shoulder, wrist, ankle mobility, sit in your living room when you're watching TV or through the commercials, like this. Fight it. Just sit here. Fight it. Try not to come here. Try not to come forward. Stay here the best you can. If it's only like 10 seconds, rest. Keep working on it. Um, sometimes overhead squats can be a little bit easier. Go ahead there and grab go. that if you're doing it with a barbell. Now, for most of you, you're gonna need, go ahead. Just. You're gonna need to have your grip pretty wide. So this is a snatch grip. Oh, We're not gonna girl. be talking about snatches today. That can be another video for another time. Um, but her, she's gonna look like a martini glass, if that makes sense. She's got a glass and a triangle and a little olive. And her, if she had a ponytail right here, that's where the barbell needs to hang out. So then she's going to squat. And sometimes it's a little bit easier to have some weight help kind of push you down if you need that help. If you just collapse forward when you're using or when you have it, yeah, like that. If that keeps happening, just let it go. Let the barbell go. Go back to your goblet squats. Work on that. Work on keeping your chest up. And work on getting down in a squat before you worry about putting a barbell over your head. 
Question. Question for Facebook. How often should you power clean and or practice form for integration? So Facebook asks, how often should you power clean or practice these movements? As often, well, as often as you want to, as often as you want to get better at it. I mean, if you're an Olympian, you're going to practice these every day <laughs> or close to every day. Um, I would start with, it depends, like if you really want to get good at them, put them, in your, put them in your routine two times a week. That will help. Put drills in your, in your routine a couple times a week. And just build on top of these little basic things till you get better and better. And if you like, start to fall in love with it, go find a weightlifting gym. Uh, there's tons of those around. Go just practice. If you, if you get the weightlifting bug and you just want to do snatch and clean and jerk, then like, go find a gym and, and do it. Um, but yeah, in general, a couple times a week, three at most, if you, if you uh, are really wanting to get good at it. Okay, everybody got that. <laughs> I'm talking, I feel like I'm talking a lot, which is, which is just good. Okay, um, another thing you can do to improve your mobility is to like, like pretend, I wish we had a wall. Pretend this is a wall, <laughs> right? Pretend this is a wall. You're going to start like about a foot away from the wall, put your hands in the air and do a squat and try not to run into the wall with your knees or your hands and then come closer do it again. And then get closer, do it again. My knees might have hit the wall on that one. It's called squat therapy, that's a really good one. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna do an actual clean. So, we're gonna start with what's called a power clean. Maybe I should, I should back up. Um, a clean that you see in the Olympics is usually from the ground, they come all the way here, they come all the way up, and then they do a jerk, okay? That's the clean end jerk. Those are big movements, there's a lot going on. We're gonna just take a piece of the clean and work on basically the hardest part of it, which is your hip extension. So, Tyra's gonna pick up the barbell, and we're gonna work on, we're gonna do a hang power clean. And that means the bar is not gonna come anywhere near the ground because there's just way too much that can go wrong, especially if you're a beginner. So we're gonna start, the bar's not gonna get any lower than like between her knee and her pockets. This is all it's gonna be right here, okay? When she cleans it, just go ahead and put it on your shoulder. Oh. She's, the lowest she's gonna go is about like four inches that way, if that makes sense. That's power. This is your power position. Hang means the bar is gonna be hanging, not from the ground. So we're going to do a hang power clean, if that makes sense. If you are, and we're not even going to do the jerk. We're not going to do the jerk yet. If you're not ready, that's another video for another time. Um, put that down for a second if you want to. The reason that we're doing just a portion of it, again, is because lots of, if the barbell's on the ground, like your position to do a clean really, really well, your position has to be perfect the entire time. And if something goes wrong from here to here, you're effed. If something goes wrong from here to here, you're effed. If something goes wrong from here to here, you double effed. And if you're here, you're like falling over and dead. Probably not dead. dead. Could die. Dead. <laughs> Question. Uh, to Facebook, what's the best way to prevent injury while doing these movements? Facebook asks, what's the best way to prevent injury while doing these movements? Don't do it too heavy. Leave your ego at the door. Be like, I'm a beginner. I don't know what I'm doing. We're going to do 10 pounds, and that's fine. Really like this, so if we're gonna talk about injury rate, the injury rate for weightlifting is like minuscule. You're not gonna get hurt doing this because you're not gonna put weight on the bar that you can't do. Like why, duh. Just do, try it out, add weight as you go. If you feel something happen, if you feel yourself be out of position and we're gonna tell you what those positions are, like stop, don't do it. There's no, like who cares how you're doing. If you're gonna be in the Olympics and that matters, you can be a little bit more risky. If you're just trying it out, there's no reason to like do more weight than you can handle. So just, I don't know. Be cool, man. Be cool. Be cool, man. <laughs> don't hurt yourself. Start slow. Start slow. Okay, so position number one, go ahead and pick it up, is the power position. So that's just soft, yeah, bend your knees like that. Okay, this position is, amazingly enough, really difficult for people to do. A lot of us, you can relax for a second. 
if we have a barbell here, the first thing we do is this. You have no power from this position, none at all. And surprisingly enough, a lot of people try to squat that way. You got a barbell on your back, and instead of going back with their hips, they go forward with their knees. Yikes. Same, yeah, pressure, ouch. You have, think of all the kinetic energy you have if you're in this position. Your hamstrings, your butt are totally loaded. You have all this ready to move the barbell up. Now the secret to weightlifting, just sit down, you ready for this? The secret is the way the barbell moves is through violent hip extension. You're not pulling with your arms, you're extending your hips. Now, that hip extension is probably like the hardest thing for people to figure out. Because at no time in your life, probably ever, unless you're jumping onto a box or across a river or something, do you do this. And most of the time when you do any sort of extension, you're jumping forward, right? This, you're gonna work on jumping, not even jumping, you're gonna work on this. That makes sense, okay? Butt squeeze, hamstrings engaged, and you're gonna move your hips up. So why don't you just do a couple little like, <laughs> yep. Pulse. Now, you might feel like a complete idiot doing this movement, but I'm telling you what, the better you can get at extending your hips, the barbell will move, okay? And I, I, I promise you, it's not from doing this. That is not a clean. Here. Okay? Tyra is also doing a really good job of keeping her arms straight. That's another thing. A lot of people want to go and they come here. You, you can do that. That's not what we're going to do today, though. We're going to keep it straight, and we're going to work on shrugging the bar up. And we're going to use the energy from our hips to move the barbell and shrugging. Okay? Try that again. And you guys will notice, I know that's hard to see to like the naked, untrained eye, but there's a portion where the barbell is in like this area that it's weightless for Tyra, that she can't feel it. That's because that power from her hips, her hips is moving the barbell up. And that's what you want. You want there to be a portion in your lift where you can't feel the barbell. And that's when it's heavy, that's when, when it's weightless, you, you can get underneath it. But because we're doing power, we're gonna be a little bit different. So Tyra is now going to work on bringing the, um, let's just do Scarecrow, okay. like bring it over. Yeah. You don't even have to go that. Yeah. So just start here. Oh, okay. So this is another drill to work on those fast elbows. Yep. Bring them here. Bring them around as fast as you can. You're going to drop underneath it a little bit. Now, again, mobility is hard. Coordination is hard. Yep. This is not an easy drill. And again, you might feel like an idiot, but if you can... Get your elbows around fast. It's another really important trick to the clean. If you have slow elbows, you're gonna catch forward and you're gonna catch low. That means you're gonna wind up here and there's no way you're gonna be able to counter the weight and get it up to that position. If you've got a bunch of weight here, you're just gonna fall forward. Okay, do that one a couple more times. Good. Good. Good, okay. Now we're going to put the two movements together, right? So power position, we're going to hang a little bit, we're going to pop it up and bring our elbows underneath it. Good. Good. So Tyra's, Tyra's cutting her pole a little bit. <laughs> I'm to coach, coach eyes here. Do it, yeah. So you're here, she's pulling, she's getting to about here, and then she's, gonna, she's starting with her arms. I want Tyra to work on getting all the way to her pockets, I'll get the barbell a little bit higher. So another thing about weightlifting is you have to be really patient. The barbell needs to get, you need to pull it pretty high before you can pull yourself underneath it. So I'm going to have her do it again, be a little bit more patient, put your hips bigger. Yeah. Faster elbows. Good. Okay. Another thing Tyra could do better is move her feet. Now, I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, and this drives me crazy, is that people clean like this. Ah! Stop jumping high. 
If you want to do anything with your feet, move them out quickly. If you watch, if you watch the Chinese lift, I don't know if you guys are like weightlifting nerds, watch the Chinese and watch their feet. They move from like here to here and like, it's so fast, it's awesome. So I want Tyra to work on moving her feet from here out a little bit as she catches and then she's gonna readjust her feet every time. Yeah. Beautiful. Good, Tyra. Good. Okay. I'm just going to throw a little bit of weight on it. Um, you can put it down. Now, once you sort of get that drill, once you figure out how that should feel, it's going to take a long time. Add a little bit of weight. That actually might help you feel the weight a little bit better. If the bar is really light, it can be hard to feel, especially if you're using like a PVC pipe. It's like impossible to tell what you're supposed to be doing with your body if you're like pulling air. So let's, we're just going to throw on 10 pounds. And we're just going to do another five or so. YouTube asks, what are better, better stretches to get good elbow mobility? Um, I like that scarecrow high, mobility, uh, high elbow over. You can also, if you pick it up, just pick up the barbell. Um, just hold it here. Hang it. Yeah, your elbows can be low. And bring one arm up. Ooh, yeah. And then down. And then switch. Yeah. That one's good. Keep doing that. Bring that one down. So I like this one. Up, down. Up, down, up, down. Um, a lot of the times with, it's not necessarily elbow mobility. Most of the trouble is back here and up here. So bodybuilders, particularly dudes, push a lot. Everything's really forward, we like bench press, we do push-ups, everything's here. We sit at our desks and we scrunch forward. So everything's pulled together here, which makes being anything in this situation like <laughs> destroyed. Also, our upper backs tend to be really tight, again, because we're forward, and this is trying to compensate for that. So if you can do any movements that, or even yoga, that you can be back with your back, you have your shoulder blades down, you're in a straight, like, that's just, that's going to make a world of difference. And that generally is more of the issue for front squat. It's not necessarily, like, that your, your shoulders are tight, yes, but it's, they're tight because they're forward, and it's tight because your upper back is, like, locked. And that's, that's, general, that's, a, that's a boy problem in general. Um, so any sort of mobility that you can do for, like, yeah, yoga. I really like, like this, old, this guy. And then reach forward, reach that way. That's nice. It's a nice way to do it. You can do this way, too. Yeah. Take a yoga class. Practice mobilizing your upper back. Um, okay, a couple things to, I want to talk about. I want to talk about your hook grip. So, can you guys get in on this here? The hook grip <laughs> might be Tyra's, Tyra's man hands. Man. Um, so this is going to make this is going to make it look a lot easier for her. <laughs> <laughs> um, so hook grip might be the most painful thing you'll ever do in your life, but once you learn it and do it properly, your grip will never be as weak as it is right now. So, also, if you're strapping up to do this, like, effing stop strapping up. Hi. Question about that. Is it okay to use straps, uh, elbow wraps, knee wraps, or anything else? Oh, you um, yes, you can use wrist wraps, you can use knee wraps, you can use a belt if you want to, um, if that makes you feel better, for sure. Um, I just would not strap my hands to the bar. Uh, you, A, shouldn't be doing weight that that's heavy enough for your grip to fail. Um, use your hook grip. 
strapping yourself to the bar in in any like if you're in this if the bar is over your head and you're strapped to it you're just like asking for a disaster essentially you're like please universe kill me don't strap yourself to the bar and put it over your head it's just a bad idea okay so hook grip actually let's we're gonna we're gonna back up from the hook grip I'll return to it where should your hands be on the bar in general where do you like your hands Tyra They're like a thumbs distance okay that's hands. okay I said the best rule of thumb is when you pick up the barbell, it kind of hangs out in your hip crease. That makes sense. So mm -hmm. just pick it up. Yeah. And then you can put it back down. So she's I a little should, low. I guess you turn yeah. it. Yeah. I don't because this is in the way. Oh, yeah. Never yeah, mind. That's right. There's a bar. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bar there. Um, Tyra's tall. She's a long torso and she has long femurs. So her barbell hits a little bit lower. She also has long arms. This looks a lot different on me. You're gonna have to play with your hand positioning. Um, thumbs, thumb away from your thigh is generally a really good place. I do what Tyra does. The end of the knurling right here, measure your thumbs. Um, go ahead and put it down. Guys in particular might need to be a little bit further out, especially if they're, like we are talking about their mobility. If you need to be a little bit further out, that's okay if that helps you get here to that position. But in general, about a thumb's distance from the end of the knurling is a great place to be. Okay, the hook grip is where you actually hold your thumb and the barbell at the same time. Might be hard to, to yeah, see. Hard. Yeah. Um, see, she got her thumb there, and then she wraps her thumb with her fingers. It sucks, especially if you have a lot of weight on it, and especially if you're not, if you're doing, if you're doing hang cleans and you gotta hang onto that bitch for a long time, it sucks. But I promise you that it's the right thing to do. Use your hook, hook grip. And I actually, I started using hook grip for deadlifts oh, instead yeah. of reverse grip. And that's, Thanks. it sucks, but it's way better. And I won't blast my bicep out of yeah. it, my arm. Forearms will thank you. Yes, and your forearms will definitely, like you're putting the pressure on your hands rather than your forearms. And if you're doing a CrossFit workout and you happen to be doing like high rep cleans, hook grip, it will save your life. So practice it. Start with a, start with a light weight. See how it feels. Your thumbs will be like, why? Just cowboy up. <laughs> Do your <laughs> or girl <laughs> or cowgirl out? <laughs> yeah. Okay. That is the grip clean. I think we're good with the clean. Does anyone have any questions? More questions about how to do the hang power clean? Why you should do it? Let me check my notes. I think I got everything. You got a question? Yeah. Question. Should there be any forward push from the hips? Forward push. No, not forward. do not hump the barbell. Humping the barbell. No this no. is what happens. So, one of the other secrets of weightlifting is that you want to minimize horizontal displacement. And that means the barbell needs to go from here to here on a flat plane. If you hump it away from you, you're going to have to jump your ass forward to get to the barbell. Does that make sense? So, no. I, no, your hips should not push the barbell to get it up. Your hips can make contact with the barbell, and they probably will, but that, that does not mean that you're, the barbell should go out from your body. That's, that's one of the hardest things for people to learn, is keeping everything really close. And if you watch, um, if you follow like Hook Grip on Instagram or USA Weightlifting on Instagram, there's really, some really good Chinese weightlifters that you can follow. Watch their barbell. As they as they clean, and you'll see that it stays in the same freaking line yeah. the whole time. Sometimes they'll even draw lines, like on ESPN, yep. with all the yep. things. They'll draw, but a they'll line. draw the line of the bar path of yep. how it's supposed to be is like straight up. Yep. And, down. and if you want to get really nerdy with it, there are apps that will that that you can exactly. film your your lift, and it'll draw the line for you. It's pretty cool. Um, another thing I want to mention while we're talking about weightlifting is the equipment that you're using. So. Weightlifting barbells, if you're, if you're in a regular Globo gym, chances are that most of the barbells aren't going to spin. And that means this part moves. That makes sense. A lot of barbells won't move. And this one's just OK. But you want to make sure that the weight will spin when it's on there. Otherwise, <laughs> otherwise when you go to pick it up, it's like, it, eh, it. Eh. It's really hard. And if you're having a hard time, like if you, it feels super duper weird when you're when you're trying to clean, that might be part of your issue is the equipment. 
So again, you might have to stop, stop and do a CrossFit box. Try it. Question. <laughs> Troll question. Troll. Oh, troll question. Um, Cliff Dan wants to know how we can get your numbers. Okay, yeah. Married brother. Boyfriend. <laughs> Boyfriend. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry, son. Good luck. There's lots of other hot chicks out there, though. Cross In your local gym. CrossFit box. <laughs> <laughs> or bodybuilding gym. Or bodybuilding gyms. Sure. But thank you. That's sweet. It's very sweet. But I like that you just decided, like, we're interchangeable. Like, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Whatever. Either you don't or. even know us. <laughs> Uh, another question from Coach. Uh, he has shoulder pain when he lowers the bar. I don't know if that's from 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 here to here. Here to here. Uh, yeah, that's actually pretty common. Um, I would refrain from doing this. Then, just don't do it. Um, if you're okay here, practice your front squats. You can even practice if you want to practice jerking. Coming here if that doesn't hurt you. But if you're if it's really really painful, coming here to here, just don't do it. Sorry. Um, go see a doctor, go see a chiropractor, mm -hmm. a PT. It just, if it hurts, don't do it. It's like number one rule of thumb. Sorry, I mean, sorry, that sucks. I don't know if you want to do it, but like, yeah. You want your shoulder. Shoulder's more important than cleans for longevity. Reasons. Longevity. <laughs> okay, how much longer? What, where are we? What's the uh, timing of this? Ten more minutes? Perfect. Oh, ten Now we can do a med card. Okay. If you all want to get lean and mean, um, one of the important things to do is condition. Now, I don't know about you, Tyra and I hate the treadmill. It's the worst. <laughs> Running in general. Yes. Anti we have to run in CrossFit, running. but like the treadmill is, I just spit, treadmill is the worst thing ever. So there are ways that you can, A, build muscle and condition at the same time doing movements rapidly right. <laughs> for amount of time um, and we're gonna do one of those workouts right now it's gonna be fun oh shoot. but we're not gonna do it with an Olympic lift because that's kind of crossfitty and I know you guys hate CrossFit so we're gonna do something <laughs> different so Tyra for 10 it's minutes while getting fit right for 10 minutes Tyra is gonna do 10 burpees then she's gonna do 10 kettlebell swings Morph. then she's gonna do 10 box jumps then she's gonna do 10 sit-ups for 10 minutes, she's gonna just keep doing that. Now, 10 minutes. the goal of this is to not burn out in the first minute. And that's really hard, especially for um, ego, ego dudes, uh, new CrossFitters, is they like try really hard. They're like, oh, that girl's beating me. And they go really hard and they like can't finish the workout. Your goal for workouts like this is to choose a speed, choose that, get your heart up to that red line and try to keep it there. And that's a skill, and that takes a lot of time. Oh my gosh. I've been doing CrossFit for like four years, and I still haven't quite figured it out. I still run out of the gate. I'm like, let's do yeah. this. And you can watch this shit happen right yeah. before your very eyes. So um, I'm going to set a clock ten on burpees. my phone for 10 minutes. So it goes burpees? It goes burpees, swings, jumps, sit-ups. OK. Oh. Yeah, move your, move your mic. Oh, Stopwatch. Timer. 10 minutes. Now. This 10, 10, 10, 10 thing that I did is like just totally arbitrary. 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 <laughs> arbitrary. Um, if, if 10 minutes seems like an eternity, which it kind of is if you're in the middle of this, um, just Word. do eight minutes. If that seems like also an eternity, just do five minutes. Being able to move your body fairly rapidly for a long amount of time is really good for it. Um, but it is a particular skill for the sport of CrossFit. It's sort of particular to CrossFit, but I promise you, it's gonna help you. It's the same thing as doing a HIT workout, really. It is. Okay. Good training. Ready? We need some. Ready, Tyra? I know we need some music. It's okay. I'll, I'll sing. Yeah, girl. On your mark, get set, go, go. So, if you guys haven't ever done a burpee, should I talk? Well, what's the best way to do yes. this? I'll just talk. Okay. Tyra's doing burpees. Now, there are different types of ways to do a burpee. The CrossFit burpee is that your chest has to touch the ground and your hands have to come over your head for it to count. Um, if you're in a competition, generally also your hips have to be completely vertical. So you can't do a burpee and then land like this and then get back down. Everything has to straighten up. Kettlebell swings. Oh, you're going to do, she's going to do American style kettlebell Sorry. swings. No, do it. No, that's fine. We'll just talk about it. 
Um, kettlebell swings are actually a more complex movement than you might think it is. Um, the best way to do it is to engage your hips. That's what this, that's what generally it's for. She's gonna, uh, I'll come back to that. Sorry. No, no, she's moving fast. It's good. I talk a lot. Box jumps, same thing. Tyra's gonna completely come vertical. If she's in a competition, those might not be reps. Yeah. So in a crossover competition, you're going to have to come completely vertical and then get back down. But since we're just working out, it doesn't matter. You can step up, you can jump up, step down, you can step up, jump down, you can step up, step down, whatever you feel comfortable with. Getting on top of a box and, and off sucks. Sit-ups. Crossfit sit-ups generally are your shoulders have to be on the floor to, the, to begin, and then your hands have to, and then basically your shoulders, you okay? Yeah. Okay. And you're, oh, you're going to wait for me. <laughs> Thank you. I was like, ah. Um, you have to come all the way vertical with your torso. And that's a CrossFit workout, or CrossFit, sorry, movement sit-up. If you don't like doing sit-ups like this, you don't have to. You can do crunches. You can do a plank. You can do whatever you want to. But this is because you, have, you get to rest here and here. It's true that you get whatever less core engagement. But I guarantee if you're doing 10 minutes of 10 of these, it's going to suck. You're going to feel it. Coupled with all the other stuff you do, it's going to still destroy your abs. Okay. Um, there's a couple other ways you can do burpees. You can walk up if you want to. and show them a little walk up. Yep. Walk up, walk back. You don't have to jump at the end. You can just stand there. If you get tired, um, this is a great way to go because you're still moving, but it's just less hardcore. Um, it doesn't look as cool. That's true. It's slower. But um, it's more important that you keep moving rather than like killing yourself and then having to sit there for two minutes because this is really only 10 minutes. You're trying to get as much work done as possible in 10 minutes. So the more you move, the better. Back to kettlebell swings. Yeah, she's going to do Russian style kettlebell swings this time. And that means that the kettlebell is just going to come to her eye line, essentially. Um, I would suggest that everybody do their kettlebell, sorry, I keep touching my, kettlebell swings like this until they sort of, unless they're doing CrossFit. If you don't do CrossFit, don't come all the way up here, just go to there. Rule, good rule of thumb. Um, I'm going to talk more about the kettlebell swings while she's doing box jumps. Um, and I'm going to tell her where she's at. Tyra, you're at six minutes and, well, you still have six minutes, 6.30 to do. So when you're doing kettlebell swings, you can't see me. Keep, keep watching, Tyra. Um, the point is, is to engage your, your hamstrings and to engage your butt. And that's a really hard time. It's a hard thing for people to, to understand. A lot of time with um, kettlebell swings, they do a little squat, like a squat forward weird thingy. Um, use your butt, put your butt back, and then um, thrust your hips forward to allow the, dump, the kettlebell to come forward. Instead of being here and then like moving your arms to like pulling the kettlebell up and then squatting it back down and pulling it up and squatting back down, use your hips to move the kettlebell. Again, it should feel weightless essentially as you're doing it. Tyra's doing a great job doing burpees. I didn't do sit-ups. Oh, whoops, she forgot the sit-ups. So she'll go back and redo the sit-ups. <laughs> yeah. Doing good. And there's no music. It's better when you have music. We have a question about cleans. Okay. Uh, what would be your advice for somebody just learning clean? Or just wanting to start out? What should they do? Any movements or anything specific? Just to, uh, so the question is from, should I talk to the camera? Can you hear, can they hear me? Whatever. Hi. Hi, question from Facebook. <laughs> uh, the, what advice would I have for someone that's just starting to clean? I would say it, it depends on if you want to be good at it or if you just want to play around with it. If you want to be good at it, go to a weightlifting gym, go to a CrossFit gym, learn how to do the movement properly. If you just want to play around with it, do the drills that I was showing you before, hang power clean, just get more comfortable with having the barbell, bringing the barbell from here to here as often as you can. And that's really the best advice I have. Find a good coach, learn how to do the move, movement properly, and then practice that movement. Also mobilize, because that's generally going to be another problem. Another question. Another troll question. Yes. Do you guys like English guys? So people from 
English. You sound like you're from England. <laughs> uh, sure. English guys are cool. Um, do you CrossFit? Yes. Yeah. Are you strong? <laughs> if not, then nah. Serious question. Serious question. Uh, for kettlebell swings, what is the downside to squatting slightly deeper to get more quad activation? That's just not, that's um, a kettlebell swing, that's not the movement. Um, if you want to, if you want to get more quad activation, then like do a kettlebell squat. This is weird to not talk. I'm just like a disembodied voice. <laughs> if you could do just a kettlebell squat, uh, you can do a goblet squat or whatever if you want more quad activation. The, the proper movement for a kettlebell swing is really hamstring and glute. So switch it, whatever, if you want to use that, use the kettlebell swing as a hamstring and glute exercise. Don't use a kettlebell swing as a quad exercise, sorry. Did I get another awful troll quest, cruel troll question? You guys are terrible. Uh, they, they just want to, if somebody asks, can you be my mom? <laughs> can you, you be my mom? She is a new mom. I mama. have a mom. I am a mama. My little baby. She's a mama. Okay, you're doing good, Tyra. Uh, what other? I don't know what round. I don't know. I haven't been counting. You have three more minutes. Also, if you, oh, another question. Uh, how do I get stronger? I seem to be stuck in the same weight with my power plants. That's a really good question. Um, I, again, this I'd have to see. It's probably a form issue or a um, programming issue, I imagine. Oh, the question is, sorry, if you're stuck, so if you're doing power cleans, power cleans, and they're going good, going good, and all of a sudden you like hit a wall, totally normal. Um, I would say the issue is probably your form is holding you back, so something's going wrong, so you can't catch it properly, you're not pulling properly, um, or you have a programming issue which means that you're not, you're either um, probably doing it too often or not enough, or you're not doing enough accessory work. So if I were you, I'd probably back off doing power cleans, uh, work on a full clean, um, work on front squat, like break the movement down, work on just the front squat portion. You're doing great, Tyra. Keep going. Uh, two more minutes. Work on, um, yeah, break the movement down. Do your front squats, um, do just um, a, do a hang, different uh, hang from here, hang from power, hang from above the knee, hang from below the knee, change up how you're doing the movement, that should help. Um, or just like stop power cleaning for a little while. Go snatch, if you know how to snatch, snatch for a little while. If you just wanna work on um, other stuff, like if you are a CrossFitter and you work on gymnastics for a little while, do that, uh, that should help. Or find a coach that um, knows what they're doing and that will help you too. 90 seconds, Tyra, keep going. For a workout, another question? Okay, question. So, unlike HIT, which involves rest intervals, this sort of Metcon involves no rest. Doesn't that mean it's less intense because you cannot hit max intensity? The, I guess that's true to an extent. Um, this should be at near max intensity, like you're a little bit lower. If you want to program in rest, like if you want to do a rest, if you want to do an interval and then rest for 30 seconds, you can totally do that. If you think that helps you get up to that level before you rest, you can do it that way. Um, but you should be moving fast enough that you're at pretty much that level the whole time. And technically, because we're doing different types of movements, you are giving different parts of your body rest as you're going. If that makes sense. You're not watching me. Again, disembodied voice. Tyra, you're doing so good. You have 30 seconds. Um, feel free to, yeah, add rest to this, change the movements, change the time, whatever. This sort of like circuit workout is really, it's a great way to get sweaty. It's a great way to work on new skills, especially if the weight is light. Um, and Tyra's sweaty and breathing hard, which is really all you need to burn some fat. Uh, six, five, four, three, two, one, done. Woo! Yay! Woo, it works, sis. Um, if you do something like this, hi, if you do something you like do this, so. <laughs> take, take note of how many rounds you did. I don't yeah. know if you guys were counting Tyra's rounds. No, no, we can go back to the video, Fine, right? So we can, yeah, replay. No. Um, uh, replay. No. <laughs> Count your rounds, keep track, and then uh, as you get fitter, try the workout again and, and try to beat your score from last time. That's one like important thing, I think, with CrossFit. It's not so much competing against each other. It's more about like beating yourself. Yeah. 
And like, so that's, I mean, you can start at any age, level, size, height, yeah. anything, and you constantly have something to improve on. And yeah. if you keep track, keep track, just like all I know, you guys keep track on body space, there you go. all that business, got to throw that in there. You do. <laughs> just okay. like that. Any other questions before we, before we hit the road that aren't troll? I'll troll. Thanks for trolling us, guys. Thanks. See you later. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel.